guys. Okay, we got another quick temper trip in the ground pounder series. And since it's Friday, we're going to do another quick tip. Now, this tip I recently shared in my Master Woodsman tarp class. So those of you that saw that will recognize it. And those of you that were not part of that class, this is something new and a quick tip for you. Now, most of the time, whenever we're talking about shelter, we're talking about warmth. The vast majority of things that are talking of shelter is we're dealing with how it's cold and I got to get this, or storms coming and I have to keep from getting wet. And those are perfectly viable. But there's another time you need shelter, and that's in the summertime. Everyone that goes hiking, camping, outdoorsing needs to know how to recognize the symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Now, heat exhaustion. Your sweating is starting to get less and less. You're overheating. You're short of breath. You feel like a tight headache. You've got irritability, and etc. And it doesn't seem to be, no matter how much water you're chugging while you're walking, it doesn't seem to be enough. That's your body warning you. You need to shut down and let us catch up. So there are going to be times when you're getting out here in this, especially in my south, where the high humidity and etc. is just going to sap your energy and you're just like, Ugh. you just can barely walk, okay? Those are times, especially if you're not conditioned to it. We live in an air-conditioned world. You know, we get out of our air-conditioned house, get into our air-conditioned car, go to our air-conditioned jobs. And the vast majority of us are not conditioned to suddenly be out in this hot environment. And you need to adapt to it. So I tell people, if you're going to plan on doing this long hike in the summer, you need to start two or three weeks before exposing yourself to the climate long term every day and getting yourself used to it. Because that sudden abrupt change from going from we're staying around 70 to 95 and 85% humidity will put you on the ground in a hurry, no matter what condition you're in. You have to be set up for it. So what's today's tip or trick? That's a, it's a summer heat shelter. Now let's say I'm out and I'm walking. Now I'm in deep forest right now, but what if I wasn't? What if I was in broken cover or perhaps even someplace of just pines and things where I have shadow but not good shade? I'm in a mix here of broadleaf hardwood and pine, so I've got shade right here. But what if that wasn't true and I needed to put up a shade because I've reached, I need to stop. I don't need to go on another half hour to find. I need to stop, okay? I need to be able to put up a shelter quickly. So let's deal with that. And that's a war something to prevent overheating. It's a shade to, pre to prevent overheating. So we're going to make a, a half, or sometimes, or what I prefer to call now, a split diamond. And I was looking at this recently at my gathering. Uh, the Fuel the Fire crowd, J.J., uh, Morrison was show Jonathan Morrison was showing his class and one of the things he demonstrated was the half diamond is a way to care for a patient when you're bringing them out of the, uh, a wilderness rescue it's a way you can set it up quickly to get them warm and be able to still see and treat your patient well that sparked a thought because I've seen this used and I did a video a while back showing how to do a, a double tarp in order to prevent heating to prevent UV so let's do that, but we're going to do it like we were doing it on the trail, and we're going to do it with our poncho right quick. So let's get set up. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop our pack. I already got my poncho out from the quick grab area that I put it in right back here. Flipping it around. Inside the flap, I've got my shelter kit. Now, a lot of people know this for carrying a M16 cleaning kit. It's no lala set. A lot of people don't realize that it will carry tent stakes real well. Those aluminum tent stakes. Now these, and they're in there pretty tight now, I ain't going to lie to you. They come out pretty good. I like these. They're cheap, they're easy. But remember I talked about how that top hurts your hand? Well, you need a palm saver. And the palm saver I'm going to be using is a U-shot gun shell. It goes over the top and i got something I can put my hand on and shove it in the dirt without having to 
cut my hand up on that edge. The other thing is, in the little accessory packet up here, that's where I keep a piece of 550 paracord, daisy chained up to go around the tree, and a piece of bank line set up is a quick line so I can set up in many different configurations. So let's get started. I will need a grand total of three stakes. I carry ten stakes in here. So I got one, two, three. Velcro back, put the center snap, put it back on the pack. Okay, this is going to be the tree I'm going to tie on to right there. So I'm going to take the pack and put it right there. It's me a lazy back and me to be able to lean back on once I get my shelter set up. Next, I'm going to take my poncho, take one of the top corners, I'm going to take my piece of 550 cord, this daisy chain, this is a um, Canadian jam knot, pull it, and it zips out, I take that twisty loop I already got in it, I go through it, just like that, come up to the tree, about where I want it, and hook it up in a Canadian jam knot. Let's just go around the tree, go through the loop, pull the other end through that loop, just like that, cinch it up, pull it to the height that I want, and cinch it up. Just like that. And since it's a jam knot, I can just pull it tight and let go of it. Now that I go to my diagonal, point away from it, and back up where you can see it a little bit better. Now, I take my tent stake, I put my shotgun shell over it, I grab that twisty loop at the far end, go through it, go around two times, pull it out tight, push it in the ground. With that shotgun shell, it don't hurt my hand. Now I take like I was going to be doing a diamond, I take the far side, I'm going to put that stake through that loop, give it about two twists to lock it in place, and I'm going to pull it out with that shotgun shell on top, just like that. Now what you see right here is a half diamond. Top ain't hooked. If I came over to this side and anchored it, it's a diamond or a ply point. But I'm not. I'm going to be in this. But I want more sunproofing. I want to make a double roof. So I'm going to take that top layer now that would normally be pulled over here to become a diamond. And I'm going to pull it that way to create another top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off about four or five inches, stake it down, just like that. Now, let me give you a close-up of that and show you what I've done. Now, by pulling this one out further, this is the one that I'm actually going to be underneath, and this one's higher up. What's happening is the sun's going to come down the sun's going to hit this. When it does, it's going to heat up this surface. And as it does, it's going to, by convection, transmit heat. But since this surface and this surface are separate from one another, this one will heat up and a convective air current is going to come down here and fly up. Heat rises, so it's going to rise on the inside, sucking cool air underneath to flow up. So this acts like a heat shield. It's going to absorb more heat, making this shade below it much cooler. Okay, here's another look. See, through here is an open space. The solar heat's going to heat this up. This is going to be catching some UV radiation, but not a lot. As that UV radiation passes through to this side, it's been greatly reduced. This will become hot, tur, warmed up. And the cool air will flow up along this edge, and since this is a continuous upward heat, it sucks out, which keeps this tarp 
this lower cooler. So I've made a double layer top for heat to keep me in a cooler position. I get in here. I take and put my pack back here as a lazy back. And I lay back like this. This would then be my sunblock. Of course, I got the sun coming from this way now, but I wanted to set it up where you could see it more easily. But I can lean back, and I would have a sunshade right here that's going to greatly improve my cooling. This would block UV sun radiation better than just a single tarp or a single poncho. The double layer allows it to have a convection current and help me insulate better. So this would make a better sun shield. This would help me. I can lay down. I can be drinking my fluids, and I can be cool and out and open. Those are plenty of air around me, so I'm not in a, a tight space. Plus, as that heats up, it's going to form a convective current that's going to suck air underneath, so I'll get a little bit of an air moving around me. That's a big advantage. So for day, today's ground pounder tip or trick, it's the split diamond. It's a trick to use in the height of summer when you're hot, I need to take shade and I can't get a good shade. I may have, you know, I'm around pines or broken where I need to create a shade. And a single layer of tarp or poncho does okay, but it is not as good as a double layer because of long wave UV radiation penetrates that. And you'll know it anytime you put up, let's say, a poncho up over you in bright sun over a hammock or something, you feel like you're laying out in the sun because that poncho is not that high of a UV blocker. Now there are some tarps that have a much higher UV rating and therefore would be much better at blocking the warmth from the sun. But the US Army ponchos and the standard ponchos and, and standard tarps we use for camping and, and backpacking don't have a very high UV rating. Now the emergency reusable space blanket with that silvered side turn it with the silver sides to the outside to help reflect. It is good at being a UV blocker. But we're talking ground pounder and we're talking poncho and a rucksack. So this is what I would do to try to give myself a little advantage in the summer heat to try to cool myself down when I've exerted a little too much. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button before you go. And if you carried a poncho and a rucksack in the past, put it down there in the comments. Let me know the trip tips and tricks you came up with when you were out in desert heat or something like that trying to stay cool. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day guys.